All right, guys, this is the Mega UV Cure Box build, and it works out to about 14 by 14 by 9 on the inside. Now, this project came about because I've got a Piopoli Phenom L um, resin printer, um, but they don't offer a UV curing solution, and it's a big printer. So I went online trying to find some options. You know, it's like a $1,000 cure box. I went to Frozen, who makes the Mega 8K, because they had a cure box for it, but you click on the link, and oh, product page not found. They obviously don't sell it anymore, and I couldn't get it at the time anyway. So what I did is I am going to CNC my own enclosure and use some Amazon components, uh, which I link in the bottom of the video description uh, to build my own. So essentially I'm opening up Vectric V-Carve and I've already pre-designed the front panel, back panel, and the top panel, and then the midsection panel, which is effectively the middle panel. Don't worry, it'll make sense once I start putting it together. And I've got room for a window, I've got four components as you can see, and I've got room for the controller, plus I've made this little Cure logo, you know, just kind of a whimsical thing uh, to put on the CNC. So I'm going to be loading this 4x4 sheet onto the CNC machine. This is HDPE plastic, which is high density polyethylene. I could have easily cut this design of plywood, but I just wanted to have plastic for obvious reasons. It looks better, cleans up easy, and it's just a more professional solution, but this stuff is obviously crazy expensive. It's probably like two or three hundred dollars for this one sheet. And once I've got all those cut out, I've got my CNC who's pre-drilled the holes, um, but I haven't countersinked the holes. So I've got my countersink bit and my drill. I'm just going to go countersink every single hole. Now this is probably the one time where I wish my CNC had an automatic tool changer because I could I could have had a countersink holes for me. Once all those holes are countersunk, it's really just as simple as putting these four panels together. So I line them up and I'm pre-drilling the holes through the actual drilled holes, but I'm pre-drilling the side of the panels so I can actually put screws in. The thing about HDP plastic is if you just try and throw a screw in it, the screw is going to heat up and it's just going to break because the stuff is so dense. Hence the name HDP, high density polyethylene. It's not like screwing into plywood. If this is plywood, I probably wouldn't have had to pre-drill those holes, but because it is HDP, I've gone ahead and used like a 1 8 I believe, drill bit, pre-drill those holes before using some number 8 screws to put this entire thing together. And again, countersinking them was important because I didn't want those screw heads to pop through. Uh, and be physically, you know, felt if you ran your, your fingers, your hand over the surface of this machine. So really just putting this box together to make a simple enclosure. You'll note that I don't have any left or right side. My logic was is that this is, yes, it's UV light, but it's no different really than the, you know, UV effects lights and dance clubs and stuff like that. So I'm not exactly concerned about like UV light leaking. And I've gone ahead and put, I'm gonna go ahead and put three big UV lights in there anyway. So I think there'll be enough power that I don't need sort of reflective surfaces or reflective sides, which is why it's, it's open like this. I can certainly add those in the future if I want to. I could get some mirrored acrylic and just kind of stick on the sides. Next thing I'm doing is I'm using a 60, 30, 15, 10, I believe, timer. And this is essentially a timer that you would use for like a fan or like a nightlight in your home. And it's AC 110 volts and essentially it's got four different buttons on it and you press a button and it lasts, it keeps the power on for that period of time, which I thought would be perfect for this application because I can set it, uh, basically press like the 10 minute button or 15 minute button, or half an hour button, or I believe the 60 minute button. So really I'm just pre-drilling those holes so I can mount that to my panel. And then I'm putting the uh, Asushin, blah, blah, the finishing plate on. Now I've gone to Amazon, I've got some pretty common components. I've got uh, a rotating turntable for photography, and I've got three UV lights, two of the tall ones and one kind of like a spotlight, floodlight thing. And then I've got a junction box and a power cord. Now all this stuff's gonna get kind of chopped up and run into that junction box in the end, so just follow along with me and you'll see me do that. Now this big UV floodlight is the one I'm gonna have at the top front. The idea is that if there's any kind of, um, you know, any curing that needs to go from the top of the model that I'm putting in the box, this light's going to be the one to do it, where those linear lights are really only going to do the side as it rotates. So having this kind of top portion was important to me. Um, and I believe there's slightly different wavelengths of light too, which is probably a good thing because you're going to get all kind of aspects to get through that model, which, um, you know, I'm not a 3D printing expert. This is my first cure box I'm building. Um, but my understanding is that like 395 to 405 nanometers is like that sweet spot for curing a UV resin. So once I've mounted that light, I'm using some cable ties and just mounting them uh, to the box to just make it cleaner. Probably not really necessary, but I just wanted a nice clean build, uh, which is going to keep it out of the way of that rotating tray, uh, rotating photography thing rather, 
cords to go in there. And everything I'm going to just cut the cords off um, with just regular scissors or, or uh, some clips because I'm going to tie all those cords into that junction box in the end. So I've got that main light installed and I'm going to go ahead and install those two linear lights. I think they're 16 inches each uh, and 25 watts each. So like literally there's almost 100 watts between these three lights of uh, view, VQ and power, which I think is going to be pretty beneficial and probably is honestly overkill. Um, they come with these little metal grips, kind of mount sort of thing. You just kind of stick them to your platform or your wall or whatever, and then they just literally pop into those uh, metal components. So they're pretty easy to install. Pretty much pre-drill the holes and then just run the screws in to keep those things in. And I've got, uh, again, cutting my ends of the cord off. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is install the turntable. Now this turntable is only 10 inches, but my frozen uh, L, I believe does like 13.5 inch maximum build width. So I'm gonna actually install an extension on this at near the end of the video. But in order to actually stick this to the HDP, I'm basically roughing up the HDP because it is a really, really smooth service. If I just go ahead and apply silicone to this, it'll stick to that, the turntable, but it probably won't stick very long to the HDP. So by roughing it up with some sandpaper, uh, it gives it kind of a rough surface to actually adhere to. And I'm gonna go ahead and just like center it and then tape it down. Uh, because I do want to continue with the rest of this project, which is going to require me flipping it on the side to do the wire portion. So you can see all the wires are already there. I've got the wire for my switch, and I've got the wires for my three lights and that turntable, so essentially five sets of wires in general. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that plastic junction box. It's like a regular, you know, junction box, not a junction box, like a switch box. I could have used a junction box. It's a switch box that you'd find at Home Depot, Lowe's, or wherever you get your electrical supplies. Now I want to preface this by saying I'm not an electrician. Um, some of you may be like electrical pros and be kind of like, you know, oh, that's maybe a little bit questionable. But realistically, I've got this thing I'm using as a junction box and I'm just going to tie all my neutrals together, all my hots together, and then all my grounds together. Um, and then just use the standard moret. So all I'm really doing is just kind of instead of using, you know, power bar, I'm just cutting the ends off of that, putting it all in the junction box. Um, and tying them all together and then sealing up that junction box with a plate. So as far as I'm concerned, it's above board, but it's probably not going to meet electrical code if you have like an electrical inspector come in and inspect it. But I have pretty, I have some confidence in this job that it's going to be sufficient to do what I need to do. So again, I'm just using some wire cutters to clip all the ends off and take the uh, excess wiring uh, sheathing away so I can tie them all together. And then again, hots, neutrals, uh, and grounds uh, where applicable. Um, and that switch that I have is actually has a three-way ability. So we just cut that wire off. As you can see, there's four wires coming out of that switch. I only actually need three of them. So there you go. They're all threaded up and I've tested it. You can see really quickly there. And I'm just going to put the ceiling cover on it to cover all that up and flip it all back over after zip tying the cables all together for a nice clean look. I'm going to go ahead and flip it on the back and then run that extension, uh, rather the main power cord, uh, so it doesn't get pulled on. I'm going to actually mount it to the side with another thing. Now, as I said before earlier in the video, I wanted to have an extension on that uh, rotating plate, so I've gone ahead and used our laser cutter to cut a 14 inch, half inch acrylic circle that I'm now going to essentially glue with the, the silicone to that 10 inch rotating base which is now going to give me that 13 and a half inch max size for that frozen L printer, which you can see on the right hand side of the screen. Plug it in. Does it work? Moment of truth. Let's see. Boom. There you go. All lights turn on and the turntables turn on. I'm going to give a quick close up view of that switch. So you can see what I'm talking about here. You can see I've got my fancy little cure engraved and there's that switch 60, 30, 20, and 10. Uh, so essentially all you do is press that button and it keeps all those items on for that period of time. So if I needed to do like a two hour cure or a three hour cure, I essentially have to come back and press that button uh, three sets of times to get the actual full job done. But anyway, that's the entire build. I thought it was an easier way, maybe not an easier way, but a better way of doing it than buying like a, you know, kind of a hack job thing on Amazon. And I really think it turned out pretty slick looking and makes my makerspace look awesome. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.